We're on lesson six of chapter four in which we'll fit line to data. We're going to describe the correlation of data. We'll make a scatter plot, and then we're also going to write an equation to model data as well. Scatter plots are a really neat tool to show relationships between one independent variable and a dependent variable. A lot of times you're setting out to show that there's a relationship between one and the other. For example, as this one's going up, you'll notice that these ones are also going up too on this number line. That would show a relationship. This does not show much of a relationship. If you were a scientist who was trying to prove a relationship and you created a scatter plot of data with this, um, you would probably be getting proven wrong then. There is no relationship here. Whereas this one seems like a pretty strong one. Let's take a look at these scatter plots. It says describe the correlation or the relationship of the data graphed in the scatter plot. So here we have hours studying on the x-axis. We have test scores on the y-axis. What is the relationship between the x-axis and the y-axis? Well, we see that the longer people are studying here, the higher and higher the y-axis is going, which is test scores. And this would make sense. If you study for six hours or eight hours, those people are scoring higher than those who were only studied two hours or four hours, or even one hour, or maybe even less. So we see a relationship here. So that's what it asks us to do, describe the correlation. So if we're going to describe it, we're going to say there is a positive relationship between hours of studying and test scores. And what that means is the more you study, the higher your test scores are going to be. There's a positive relationship. It's going up. If you were drawing a line, it would be a positive slope. Here we have hours of television watched and test scores. And here I see a negative slope. So this would be a neg negative relationship, meaning that the more hours of television that you watch, the lower your test scores are going to be. Um, so there is a negative relationship or correlation between television hours watched and test scores. So that would be the relationship there. Now we need to take data and actually make a scatter plot out of it. We need to make one of these the independent variable and one of these the dependent variable. Remember, independent is what we plug in and dependent is what we get out of it because we plugged it in. So this table shows the lengths in centimeters and swimming speeds in centimeters per second of six fish. And they're trying to see if there's a relationship between the length of the fish and the speed of the fish. So let's see if there is. We have a pike which is 37.8 centimeters long and which has a speed of 148 centimeters per second. If we do the L, which would be the length, which would be the independent variable along here, we could plot the dependent variable for speed up here. So 37.8 is right around here, and then 148 would be way near the top. Next one would be red Gurnard. So it would be 19.2, right below the 20, and then the 47, which would be right about here. A black bass would be 21.3, so right about here, and then 88. A Gurnard is 26.2 and 131. And last one, a Norway haddock, is 26.8 and 98. So we made the scatter plot. Now we need to describe the correlation. Um, you can kind of see it's not very strong, not as strong as the ones we saw here where there's a very straight line. This one, it follows a pretty straight line. Um, so we, we could say there's a positive correlation there, but maybe not quite as strong. So we'd say there seems to be a positive correlation between fish length and swimming speed. So we're not going to say it's a very strong one, we're just saying that there appears to be a positive correlation between these two factors. So in this problem we actually have to write an equation to model our data. So the table shows a number of active red cockaded woodpecker clusters in a part of the DeSoto National Forest in Mississippi. 
It says write an equation that models the number of active clusters as a function of the number of years since 1990. The first step of this is to make a scatter plot of the data. So what I've done is I've done years since 1992. So 1992 would just be zero here. So we're going to start at 22 and we'll make this line in red so we can see it a little better. So 0 and 22. Let's do 1993. We'd have 1 and 24. 1994 would be 2 years since 1992 and that's 27. 1995 is 3 years which would be 27 as well. 1996 is 4 years away which is 34. So that'd be up here. 1997 is 5 and that's 40. 1998 is 6 and that's 42. 1999 is 7 and that's 45. 1999 is 7 and that's 45. And then 2000 is 8 and that's 51, which is just above this bar here. This will not be an exact answer. What we're going to be trying to do here is we're going to really try to get a line that fits really well with this data and then based on that line, like we've done before, create an equation that fits it. So we could start right around here and we could graph this line, trying to get about half of them below your line and half of it above your line and that was probably my best effort right here. I have about four or five underneath above it and I have four underneath it. And then what I can do then is I can try to find two points where it intersects really well with the graph. So let's do that in blue. So here's one, and here's two. And remember the equations we work with is y equals mx plus b. This is the slope and that's the intercept. So let's work with the slope. The slope is rise over run. So we go from 25 to 35, so that's 10. The run would be from 1 to 4, so that'd be 3. That's the simplest fraction I can get, so our slope would be y equals 10 over 3x and then plus b and b is the y-intercept so when x is 0 what is y? Well we actually can see it right here y is 22 so we would do 10 over 3x plus 22 and if you plotted that out it would fall along this line right here almost exactly which fits our scatter plot pretty well so we found an equation that really fits this set of data um, not exactly like we said but very closely